So today we're going to look at the cardiac system. Just like any other assessment, you're going to start with inspection first. So the first thing you're going to look for is any bumps and lesions. I'm also going to be looking at her vessels. Go ahead and tilt your head up for me. When you have the carotid and the jugular, uh, jugular vein in the neck, I'm going to be looking for any pulsations. I don't see any pulsations, so I'm not really worried about turbulent blood flow. The next thing I'm going to inspect for is her actual heartbeat beating out of her chest. Okay, I'm making things too fast. I don't see any of that, and her chest wall looks fine. Go ahead and tilt your head back. Thank you. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is palpate. Okay. So there's not a whole lot to palpate for cardiac system. I am going to be palpating all the pulses, but I'm also going to be palpating the chest wall for thrill. Okay. So first we'll start with the pulses. You have your temporal pulse. You have your carotid pulse. Okay, moving down, I have an apical pulse. Excuse me, sorry. Her apical pulse is going to be midclavicular line on the fifth intercostal space. Okay, I'm actually not going to palpate that for you today. You're also going to be seeing your brachial pulse here, your radial pulse, your ulnar pulse, and if you move down the bottom, you would be seeing your femoral pulse, your popliteal pulse, and the two pulses in the feet, where it's in the foot video. So now I'm going to be palpating for thrills. What that means is I'm feeling for any bruits. Okay? I'm actually feeling to see turbulent blood flow. So you're going to take the palm of your hand and just rest it right under the clavicle to feel for any turbulent flow. And I feel nothing, which is a normal finding. Sorry. So next I'm going to move on to looking at the vessels themselves. In the neck, like I said, you have the carotid vessel and the jugular vein. So go ahead and tilt your head back in a little bit. There we go. So you're looking for jugular vein distension in this pose. Typically your patient's going to be at about a 30 to 45 degree angle from the bed, and you'll notice that you're going to see the vein pop out if it's distended. The way to get the measurement is you'll take a ruler and your tongue blade, and you're going to measure where you might see that vein. She has no jugular vein distension. If your patient does have jugular vein distension, it would be so large and full that you would actually be able to measure where it pops out from the skin. Okay, we want to see anything under three to four centimeters. That would be totally fine. But again, she has nothing. If she did, I would worry about things like congestive heart failure, okay, filling up that vein. The other vessel I'm going to be looking at is the carotid. Okay, and again, I've already inspected to see if it was turbulent, and I've already palpated it. But finally, when we get into our cardiac system, we're going to be auscultating, which is probably the most important part of the assessment. So I'm going to take the bell and listen for the cardia or the carotid, and I'm listening for that normal pulsation and also any for any bruits. A bruit is going to be your abnormal finding over the carotid, again meaning that turbulent blood flow. There's something wrong there. So there might be a blockage or obstruction somewhere that's causing that turbulent blood flow in the carotid. Okay, go ahead and lean your head up for me. Now we're going to auscultate the valves for the heart and listening for those normal heart sounds. Okay, your normal heart sounds are going to sound like gloved up, meaning S1 and S2. So this is actually the opening and closing of all those valves. We have five heart valves that we're going to be assessing. And the first is the aortic valve, which is on the right side of the sternal border, and the second intercostal space. Okay? So somewhere here, again, you're measuring the spaces in between the ribs, finding the second space, your aortic valve. And the sound you should be hearing louder here is S2. The reason why you're going to hear the dub sound louder at the top of the chest is because your heart's turned upside down. So the top of the heart is actually on the bottom, where the base of the heart is on the top. So S1 is going to be heard louder on the bottom of the valves, and S2 is going to be heard on the top. So again, first valve, aortic, second intercostal space, right to the sternal border, and you're going to hear S1, sorry, S2 the loudest. The next valve is going to be left to the sternal border, second intercostal space, and that's going to be your pulmonic valve. This one you're also going to hear S2 loudest, again, because it's at the bottom of the heart. So that's the pulmonic valve, second intercostal space, S2 is louder. The third area is Herb's point. So it's going to be roughly between your third and fourth intercostal space, because you're coming down now, left of the sternal border. And this is an area that you're going to hear both sounds equally, meaning S1 and S2 will be heard at the same pitch. So you're roughly in the middle of the heart. 
Coming down to the fourth intercostal space, you're going to hear the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve, you're going to hear S1 loudest. Again, because now you're getting towards the top of the heart. Right? So tricuspid valve is that fourth intercostal space. You're hearing S1 louder. Then when you come down, you're going to be right in the midclavicular line again, right or left of the sternal border, and you're going to hear the mitral valve. So when you're on the mitral valve, you're going to be hearing S1 loudest. Right? So the mitral valve and the apical pulse are relatively close together. So you can actually hear the apical pulse when you're listening for the S1 sound for the mitral valve. So that's that midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space. And that's all I have for the heart. <laughs>